last video we introduced the concept of the probability distribution and how it applies to looking at returns and risk for a stock. Now we're going to formalize that by looking at expected return and standard deviation for a single security or single stock based on a given probability distribution. Now when we calculate expected return we want to think of expected return as the average rate of return that we would earn on an investment over a given holding period, typically one year, if we could repeat that holding period an infinite number of times. One problem is we don't get to repeat that holding period an infinite number of times, we only get one shot at it. The expected return is not the same as the actual return, it doesn't tell us what we're going to receive, it doesn't even tell us our most likely return, it just tells us the average rate of return that we should expect to get. Problem with that is if you were going to walk across a river that's on average two feet deep and you don't know how to swim, you're going to be in trouble. Averages can be very misleading. We need to also look at how much risk or how much variance is there. Does that river get no more than three feet deep at the deepest section? If so, you're in pretty good shape. Or does the river get to be 20 or 30 feet deep in sections? That's an entirely different story. So we need a measure for average return, which is our expected return, and a measure for risk, which is our standard deviation. So we're going to walk through both of those. Let's start with expected return. The formula for expected return, you can see this K bar sub A is just the expected return for stock A is the summation of all possible outcomes probability times outcome. Now the formula can intimidate people looking at that big Greek summation sign but it's really not that difficult if we see it in practice. So let's start with our probability distribution and move that over into an expected return format. In the expected return formula you can see we take the probability times outcome for each possible outcome or scenario. So we start with the probability times outcome. So our expected return for stock A is just the 0.1 probability times negative 50 percent for our first outcome. Then we go to our second scenario. 0.2 probability, negative 20 percent. Go on to our third outcome. 0.4 probability times 10 percent. And then finally our fourth outcome, 0.3 probability, 60% return. Now we can just work through the math there. Expected return for stock A, 0.1 times negative 50, it's negative 5%. 0.2 times negative 20, negative 4 percent, positive, negative is the same as subtraction, 0.4 times 10 is 4 percent, and lastly 0.3 times 60 is 18 percent. So our final answer, 13%. Our expected return for this stock is 13%. Now let's go back to one of the things I said. The expected return is our average rate of return. If we could repeat this next year 10,000 different times, on average we would expect to earn 13% from this stock. 13% is not our actual outcome. Given this probability distribution, there's no single scenario 
which generates a 13% rate of return. It's also not our most likely outcome. Our most likely outcome is a 10% rate of return. So the 13%, the expected return, just represents the average rate of return that we can earn over a long period of time.